Hi everyone and welcome to UBS Trending Special Report, The Era of AI. AI is not hype. I think we've already talked about that quite a bit on these shows in the past. It's here to stay and it's nearly everywhere. So if this is day one or maybe in the world of the digital kind of conversation, 1.2 of the evolution of AI, the question is where do we go from here? So we're going to learn more about that today from my guest, Joe Wilson, Lead Portfolio Manager, U.S. Technology at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Joe, great to have you in the studio. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I don't know if you would say we're in 1.2 of AI. Maybe yeah. we're further down the road than that. I mean, it's been around for a long time. It's not just the chat GPTs. It's, you know, the streaming services have been asking, like, suggesting shows for us for years. And that's yeah. also artificial intelligence. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's more likened to, you know, everybody's definition of AI and artificial intelligence is different. Uh, you know, this is definitely a new generation, a different era that's using completely different infrastructure. Uh, I think it, it is, you know, essentially day one. Yeah. Um, it is very, very early in terms of like the capabilities, the way that we're seeing uh, AI improve at the rate, you know, at such an incredible rate, the services that we see. I mean, it's almost magic. Yeah. yeah. And by definitely, I guess if you say it's day one, that means we have a very, very long road ahead of us and exponential growth. So this is the question that I think many of us wonder is, how did we actually get to the point now where AI has taken over every conversation, it's part of so many businesses, and we're expecting it to just keep growing exponentially? How did we get here? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, A, there's been a lot of pent-up, idea generation, research and development that has gone into the idea of AI, mm. decades of mm. it. Uh, and then, you know, in more, you know, advanced compute and kind of this iteration that we're in now, which is really based on accelerated compute and GPUs, you know, this is something we've been investigating and doing really deep research in since 20, you know, 15, 2016. In fact, even at that point in time, you know, the, the big differentiator for me and something I still think about to this day is when we invited an expert to come in and talk to us about GPU compute and some of the natural language processing voice models that we were seeing uh, just really improve at a drastic rate. And the expert uh, was in a room talking to, uh, to portfolio managers and analysts and he, sa he said, you know, for the first time, computers can now see and hear at a level better than human. Wow. In, and then he like took this dramatic pause, looked around the room and said, think about that, you know? And so like, that's something we've really been thinking about and its capabilities, but I don't think it became obvious until, you know, November of 22, when we had the chat GPT moment, right? Like where you had this sense of like a very humanized feel coming from AI. If you were reading output from chat GPT, you had, had no idea that that was generated by compute versus human. Wow. I bet there were a lot of um, stunned faces when that person made that quote and said what they said about computers learning and, and hearing and seeing better than humans. Yeah. Just, I'm sure there was just dumbfoundedness in the room because I think we don't really necessarily think of computers that way in the science fiction movies we do and things like that. But to hear an expert say that, that it's reality, that's a big statement. Oh, for sure. Like that's something that you really, you... You know, like that's, I'm fortunate to be in a position to have these types of discussions with people that are way smarter than I am. But to be able to, you know, like think of, really think about that, uh, you know, it's led us to many other ideas and opportunities that have done very, very well. That's so, you know, yeah. that's, that's a really interesting point because when you think about then, obviously the evolution of what we're seeing and what we're expecting, you look at the business side, capital expenditures, I would expect that those are going to probably increase quite a bit over the, over the, uh, the coming years, yeah. and you actually, you know, at J.P. Morgan Asset Management, you provided us a chart that looked at the top ten tech companies over the decades by market cap, yeah. and it went from 1980 at 65 billion, the market cap of tech companies, yeah. all the way to 2020 when it was over 10 trillion, and that's because of that technology has gotten better, and capital expenditures have increased from piece just standard PCs to mobile technology to actual artificial intelligence. So. Expand yeah, I mean, on that like, a little bit. So there's, you know, that's actually, there's two different sides. We have one that shows capital expenditures over the last 10 years and kind of how we think about it going forward. And, you know, what's really important there is that, you know, the amount of CapEx that will be spent by five hyperscalers this year will approach 200, over $200 billion. That's up over almost 10x, right? The other chart, you know, that we show 
has the leadership of companies along with their market cap right. over each generation. And yes, I think you know we can kind of think of these two going hand in hand. Uh, you know, but the important uh, point about the market cap leadership from each era is that it changes dramatically as we enter new platforms, right? And so, like you know, I, uh, you know, companies that led in 1985 that were focused on mainframe compute and didn't pivot to PC and didn't pivot to uh, internet and then didn't pivot to mobile cloud, they're no longer on the list. That's right. Right, and they've, they've dropped off. And brand new companies, companies that were formed you know, only five years before they made the list uh, now appear at the top. And so I think we have to appreciate that amount of disruption, but also, yes, like the importance of technology in all of our lives is becoming, uh, is increasing. That's you right. Know? So like when we think a lot of times from an investment perspective, you know, it feels like when you read press or media, you you oscillate between these two extremes. One is like, are we in a bubble or technology is dead? And I always go back to like my own personal experiences or the ones that, you know, uh, of discussions I have with enterprises, which is like just thinking about the secular adoption of tech, which is much more predictable and steady than the two extremes of the market. Mm -hmm. And that's something that has me very excited about technology generally over uh, many the, the next many years, but especially now because of like this new platform that we're entering, right? The, the thing that follows uh, 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 mobile cloud is accelerated compute, it's AI. Yeah, and as you said, it's exponential. Everything is exponential when it comes to the AI story, including the energy consumption, which I think for, for those of us who are kind of watching um, you know, the story of the water usage of these data centers and the yeah. energy that's going to be utilized. The question always comes up, will we have enough to, so, so for those who don't know, you need a data center to harbor all the data and the information that runs the AI. I think there's some kind of statistic that says a JAT GPT query is 10 times more, is, has uses 10 times more energy than a Google search. Yeah. So there's more energy that's needed. Where is it going to come from? Yeah, that's a good question. I think that's what all major you know CEOs and leadership teams are thinking They're talking about, about at, at right? hyperscalers right yeah. uh, whether it's going to come from you know areas uh, you know that have natural gas uh, that maybe have excess amounts of uh, uh, of carbon um, or it's areas that we've you know recently shut down there's you know more recently two nuclear power plants that are uh, one that's going to be starting up uh, again, after many years of, of, uh, of, of not being used. And mm -hmm. another one that has excess amounts of power that just sold a, or is planning to sell a pretty uh, large amount, a third of their power creation to a hyperscaler. Right. Like, we haven't heard of, like, this, we've never, we haven't faced this type of amount of energy demand surge in many, many years. In fact, the U.S. typically plans for, like, about one to one and a half percent of energy growth, energy production growth every year. You know, with the way AI is going, we're going to need something that's going to satisfy three to five percent growth. And that's right. That's not in the infrastructure that we have today. So things will have to change. Yeah. Globally, I was looking at this International Energy Agency report and they were saying globally, uh, current data center usage stands at around 460 terawatt hours. A terawatt's a unit of power that's one trillion watts for those. I had to look yeah. it up myself. Um, then that was in 2022, and that could increase to something like one billion terawatts or 1,000 terawatts yeah. um, you know, in 2026. That's equivalent to the energy of Switzerland and Germany yeah. because of it. So do you see energy being a potential risk to the evolution and growth of AI? Could, could we kind of hit a wall and say, wow, we're, we don't know if we could power anymore? Yeah, I... I Definitely think that's a potential risk, you know, but the, uh, there has been, you know, when things become challenging, you know, when something becomes nearly impossible, that's where technology has been a, a huge enabler. Right. And where innovation has, has come in to kind of save the day. And I think we'll, I think we'll see, a, there's, it's again, day one on, on accelerated compute and AI infrastructure. So there's lots of efficiencies that will be created from the GPU infrastructure that we are able to, that is, has been you know, uh, put into the ground today, but that we'll also install over the next few years. So there'll be improvements on efficiency that way, whether it's software tricks or semiconductor uh, uh, shrink uh, uh, that occurs, there, there will be a path to continue to advance. And I think that is you know, something that 
Um, you know, like I don't think energy is going to, you know, put up a complete blockade. Right. It'll be a challenge, but I think we'll face it and overcome it. Yeah, and you make a good point. As technology evolves and gets better, so too do perhaps the way that we get to run the energy that's needed for these data centers and the way to cool them. Yeah. So I'm sure there's plenty of brilliant people right now looking into the ways to help that along in uh, in the scenario that we're seeing, especially as we're seeing growth. Yeah. Just exponentially grow go up yeah and like think about this is that you know this power demand that we see today is really just focused on like the training of models uh -huh. as well you know so like you know we're all you know starting to explore you know the personal use cases or our work use cases for you know uh, using uh, large language models or foundational models you know but we're still not using it on a continuous basis like we do Google search maybe you yeah. know, which is you know 10 times an hour or something like that but there will be a point, I, I believe, where AI will be, you know, inferencing on a 24-7 uh, time frame for each and every one of us. And um, we definitely don't have the compute infrastructure for that. So, like, there's all these different, you know, new demand areas that we st still haven't even explored that it'll make power look more challenging or networking look more challenging or just the amount of CapEx that goes into the ground uh, more challenging. Um, and what we need to start seeing really is kind of, like, are those use cases like what is the thing that is going to have us using AI infrastructure 24 7 right I, I feel like this is one of those topics that we could talk about every month yeah. and it changes and it could potentially change new new information comes and new data surfaces it's fascinating stuff yeah it, uh, that's why I love what <laughs> I do I'm yeah. like covering you know technology for as long as I have is like we've seen so many different iterations of things and I mean even last week you know new hardware uh, for like mixed reality where you put glasses on and you're able to see a video or an email pop up and then you're able to manipulate it, move it to a different part of, of the room. And when you look away, it's not there. And when you look back, it's still there. Yeah. And, right. And like, but I'm still looking through glass and able to have a conversation and, and speak with you. Like these are things that were, people said were impossible. Um, uh, you know, the services even today that we're seeing from, uh, foundation law, like those were things that were just not even possible right. two or three years ago. So this is a pretty incredible time to, yeah. to do what I do. I love it. That's great. And I feel yeah. like everybody needs to take the word impossible out of their vocabulary because everything that you said, what they, we thought was impossible even a year ago is becoming a reality. So, and who knows where it's going to go from here? Yeah. At least, and, and you know, like who's just like, right. We never know with a hundred percent confidence of something, right? right? But there's, things are looking much more possible and much more impactful with the technologies that we see today. Absolutely. And I get excited about thinking about all the, you know, gadgets and services that, you know, we're going to use on a personal, you know, in our personal lives and our enterprise lives. But I also like to think a lot about the impact uh, that it's going to have across every single sector in every industry. And, you know, the, 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 you know, godfather of AI would say, well, you know, if you were to sit down with him and ask him like, which uh, sector is going to be the most impacted, he could definitely say tech, you know, because that's obvious. Right. Uh, or maybe it's transportation because of what we're seeing with autonomous vehicles um, or robotics. But, like, the area that he's most excited about is health healthcare, right, and, like, drug discovery. And I think that's really exciting. And it's not going to apply just to, to life sciences and healthcare. Every single sector is going to be impacted by you know, accelerate compute AI in the future. That's great stuff. Yeah. Joe, thanks. I, I, I wish we had a lot more time, but that means we have to get you back in. Cause yeah, I'm, 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 I'm I close see how by. passionate I'm you are by. about this stuff. Yeah. yeah, you're just down the street. Yeah. Everybody, you know, as long as you're in Manhattan, everybody can get anywhere. Yeah. Anyway, Joe, thanks for coming through. We'll definitely get you back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great, Joe Wilson yeah. from JP Morgan Asset Management. And there's lots more information you could find on our new AI hub. The web address there is ubs.com forward slash AI hyphen hub. And Joe and I were talking about a lot of different things today. So if you want to talk to your financial advisor, that would be the best way to get more information on how some of these opportunities may fit well into your portfolio. So make sure you're continuing that conversation with your FA and make sure to follow UBS on social media. We're on all the platforms like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, including Instagram at UBS Trending is the account you can follow there. From New York City, I'm Anthony Pastore. Until next time, have a great day, everybody.